Hello everyone, my name is Bradley and this is SumSub, a channel on how to survive in the online jungle. Modern technologies open up new, sometimes incredible opportunities for us, but we have to pay with it with new threats to our security. Today I'm going to talk about exactly this, using the example of the mysterious event that took place at Gatwick Airport. The Christmas holidays of 2018 have been remembered throughout Britain due to the unprecedented events that took place at Gatwick Airport. Now, this is the second largest airport in the country, and it was completely paralysed by unknown criminals. Second busiest airport have been suspended. Was it drone or drones? More than 1,000 flights were cancelled or delayed, and this happened over the 33-hour period. 140,000 passengers were forced to change their plans altogether. And the reason for this? Well, a pair of unmanned aerial vehicles. This all started on the evening of December the 19th, when the security officer on guard had just finished his shift, and he was waiting for the bus home, until, around 9pm, he noticed a pair of drones. One of these drones was circling over the service car park, and the other one was flying along the fence of the airfield. So, naturally, he called a supervisor, and he reported the dangerous situation. Only a few minutes later, both Gatwick runways were closed, due to the threats of an aircraft colliding with an unidentified aerial vehicle. Surely you've heard more than once that birds pose a serious threat to low-flying aircraft. Unmanned aerial vehicles pose no less of a threat to aircraft, and in the summer of 2018, a group of researchers from the University of Dayton simulated a collision of the DJI Phantom IV quadricopter with a light aircraft, and at a speed of 383 kilometers an hour, the drone tore the wings plating completely and punched this huge hole through it. The drone did not shatter apart. It completely penetrated and it was buried inside the wing. You see a hole in the leading edge here, the main spar is dented. In addition to this, remote-controlled aircrafts can be used as weapons by terrorists. For example, five months before the events took place at Gatwick, drones were actually used in an attempt on the life of the president of Venezuela. But which drones are being used by criminals? Well, when I say the word drone, you probably imagine a small quadricopter that you can buy at any major electronics store, right? According to eyewitnesses on the ground at Gatwick, drones of a completely different class were appearing in the skies. Say hello to the DJI Matrice 600 Pro. This is an industrial drone. It's often used on the sets of TV series and commercials, but modifications can be implemented for patrolling large geographical spaces, such as warehouse complexes and pipelines. But this kind of drone is also much heavier. It weighs more than 10 kilograms. It's already heavier than a bowling ball. I mean, it can also lift five kilograms of payload into the air and spend more than 40 minutes in the sky with it. Now, the prices are also pretty impressive. Professional drones have similar prices to used cars. For example, this model costs just under £5,000. So two of these drones were spotted over Gatwick at once. Therefore, the security service had every reason to believe that they were not faced with some childish pranks. Something serious was afoot that could actually threaten people's lives. In the three hours after the first report about the drones, 58 flights had to be cancelled or delayed. And from 9 to 11 p.m., the drones were noticed by several more airport security officers. But then suddenly, the drones disappeared without a trace. Therefore, at midnight, the airport management decided to open the runways. And just a few minutes later after that, the drones reappeared over the skies of Gatwick. Over the next 30 hours, that story would repeat itself nine times. The drones would disappear as soon as the airport was closed, and then they'd return when they noticed the airplanes taking off or landing. Later, representatives of Gatwick Security Service would state that the attackers had an informant among the airport's employees, but they weren't actually able to prove anything here. Get out, I need to go to my mind palace. But I think everything is so much simpler. 
it was enough for the criminals to download the Flight Radar 24 app. Now, this application shows the movement of planes over any given place on the map in real time. With its help, it would be easy to monitor the state of affairs at the airport, and you wouldn't have to bribe employees or listen into the conversations that were going on on the radio. All night long, the Sussex Police and Airport Security were combing through the neighborhood, trying to find traces of criminals, or at least to scare them away. In the morning, a helicopter and several police drones would actually join the search, but none of these efforts would bring any results. The only thing that the police were able to establish was a deliberate act to disrupt the airport. The situation was also complicated by the fact that the police were forced to fight with, well, an almost invisible enemy. The drones that attacked Gatwick were too small and flew too low to be detected by the airport's radars. Therefore, the only reliable source of information here remains to be people, police officers, security and ground services. And the trouble is that this airport occupies 1,670 acres. It's more difficult to find drones on this huge territory than, well, a needle in a haystack. But nevertheless, over 33 hours from the first appearance, drone flights were observed by people 12 times. And in six of those cases, witnesses claimed that they saw a pair of drones at the same time. Later, the case materials would actually record the testimonies of 109 witnesses who claimed to have seen the drones. The attack on the airport ended as unexpectedly as it began. Early in the morning of December the 21st, the airport was opened for the 10th time. At 5.58, a plane from the East Midlands successfully landed over Gatwick, and contrary to fears, the drones did not return. The airport began to return to normal life, and the airlines began to calculate their losses. According to expert estimates, during these 33 hours of terror, the companies cumulatively suffered losses of £50 million. But these were not the final losses associated with the incident. The police investigation of the attack cost around £790,000 and ended with, well, new losses. In hot pursuit, the police detained a married couple, Paul Gates and Elaine Kirk. The interrogation of the suspects took 36 hours but ended in zilch. There was no evidence against them whatsoever and the alibi that they had was actually confirmed. But the names of Paul and Elaine were unfortunately leaked to the press, which obviously added fuel to the fire. We are deeply distressed, as are our family and friends, and we are currently receiving medical care. In June 2020, Sussex Police agreed to pay the couple £200,000 in damages and legal costs for their unlawful arrests. The investigation didn't yield any other results, and a total of 96 names appeared on the list of suspects, but charges were never pressed to not one of them. There was simply no evidence in this case whatsoever. Therefore, on September the 27th, 2019, Sussex Police officially dropped the investigation, stating that it's impossible to continue this investigation without any new information. But doesn't this bother you? I mean, no terrorist organization, group of hackers, or eco-activists has made any demands whatsoever or has admitted responsibility for what happened at Gatwick. No suspects, no evidence. There weren't even any clear photos or videos seems like it's time to call Fox Mulder for help. Or to ask the question, were there any drones in the first place? Now, I was actually interested in the story of Eddie Mitchell. He's a news photographer by profession and an enthusiast for the use of drones. During the attack, he spent almost a day in Gatwick and he was hoping to take successful photos of the drones, but his expectations were not met. When Eddie was actually about to leave the airport and he was loading his things into the car, the drone's warning lights seemed to flash over his head. So Mitchell took a few shots and anticipating success, obviously, but when he opened the photos on his laptop, he realized that he mistook, well, the drones for a helicopter that was flying 10 miles away from the shooting location. Here's a quote. If I'm making a mistake and I fly drones two or three times a week, then God help us because others will have no idea. It's funny actually, talking about this, I remember the story of the appearance of Edison stars in, I think it was 1897, when the great inventor was experimenting with a range of radio signals. And with the help of balloons, he raised long antennas into the sky. And obviously, to simplify the observation of such balls in the dark, Edison fixed bright bulbs to them. 
The newspaper men who were following every step of the scientist quickly made a mountain out of a molehill. There are articles that Edison was working on lamps that could rise into the sky to illuminate the whole country. They would have been so powerful that the light of the lamp would be seen over the Pacific Ocean. The articles multiplied, right? And they were reprinted from newspaper to newspaper and new details were required like Chinese whispers. Everyone saw Edison's lamps all over the night sky. Americans were looking out for the Edison stars and they found them. Right? The lights actually scared the locals. They prevented astronomers from following the stars and they became overgrown with rumors. They were seen as huge balls and as small little lights. People were looking for the lights and they wanted to see them. I think we may have experienced the same effect at Gatwick. You've got dozens of tired and anxious people that are looking for drones in the night sky. And bear in mind, it's not that difficult to make a mistake at the airport. You've got the lights of helicopters and planes all flying at high altitudes. You've got beacons on tall buildings, police drones, and this is all catalyzed by the fear of new technologies. You've got articles coming out and news constantly about the new threat of drones. Now, all of this, in my opinion, could help people to see things that weren't actually there. At least this version reliably explains the absence of traces, evidence, photos, and also explains the radar silence. Anyway, most of those that are interested in the history of the incident at Gatwick are divided into two camps. The first defend the version of the high-tech crime itself. The second, they blame collective hysteria and journalists who are greedy for catchy headlines, right? Me personally, I think the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And I can only say one thing. We are responsible for the technologies that we create. Any programs or services that make our lives brighter and more comfortable can easily turn against us. But anyway, this is Sum Sub. I hope you subscribe. I'm Bradley, your guide in the predatory world of the online jungle. I'll see you in the next video.